child. You may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I'm familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered, for you were made in my image. In me you live and move and have your being, for you are my offspring. I knew you even before you were conceived. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake, for all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. believe in my heart, Sister Florence, that we are in the hour of testing, right? I truly believe the same way. And we are going through a fiery trial, and we will come forth as gold. We said the same thing last week as an introduction, and we're going to keep saying that until we wake sons and daughters up. We wake them up, sons and daughters of the Most High, to know that the great I am sees that we are in oppression right now, right? We are um, by, the, by them, whoever they are. And that he is, he has risen and will set us in a safety place from him who, remember I shared Psalm 12, 5 last, last time, from him that puffeth. And so that's kind of where I want to uh, bring our, our conversation at, that there is this fake, there is this, um, this hijacker of the power of the air, the power of the breath has, has been hijacked. And we want to be reminded that, you know what, Yahuwah is the most high. He is the creator. Oh, yeah. right? He is yeah. the great I am. And he's got us in his hand, right? In control. So, right, right. I'm going to share my screen. You know what? We talked about the breath of Yahuwah um, that's been uh, breathed into our nostrils. And I just want to remind everyone. So I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to bring it up. This is the first mention. This is why I... I Go back to this verse, the first mention of the word nashama, right? So we are living beings, you know, and the result of we are living beings because Yahweh formed mankind from the dust of the ground and he breathed, he blew into our face, into our nostrils, the breath of life. So that breath of life is nashama. Remember we talked about that? Okay. Do you remember, sister, what it is that we are called for, really? Um, Galatians 5, remember the fruit of the Spirit, right? Yes. We are to and bear. That is for, for the, the truth that is in Messiah. Yeah, and, and you know how all over the scripture it says that how will we know that we are of him? We are of the, the family of Yahuwah because the, we are the children of Yah, because we bear the fruit of the Spirit. Like, how are you going to know an apple tree unless you see that it bears an apple fruit, right? So we are called to bear the fruit of Yah, of the Ruach, right, of the Spirit. Yeah, because that's how we are to discern others, if they are in truth, is by, by the fruits they produce, yes. Amen. Exactly, exactly. And, and there's nine, uh, nine fruit of the Spirit, right? That's, I'm, I'm trying to really put it in my heart. There's love, joy, peace, uh, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, um, faithfulness, gentleness. gentleness. I love that. 
and self-control. Self-control. Yeah. So that's the nine fruit of the spirit. And Is like there you charity? Said, I'm not sure. Charity, you know, that's a that's an in charity is love. Love and charity is the same. Oh, so in oh, I see. Oh, 13, the famous love chapter, you're going to see that in New King James Version or in some, in some translation, it's translated as charity. Love is or charity is, right? Um, but that's a great point. But you also mentioned something that's even a, a really important point as well. You said that we are to be ambassadors, you know, a carrier, a, represent, a representative of someone, right? So... I want to take that back to the word neshama. You know, I've been studying the word neshama for a while now. And as do you remember, we talked last Tuesday or last Tuesday, last time we met, that really neshama is energy. It's what animates us. You know, when Yahuwah breathed that neshama into our beings, so that, that's basically what moves us. And we see that there's... Yep. Seed, right? The noon, the food, yeah. and the shin, the teeth, the ability to me metabolize food. And really, in the end, we see mem as the living water and hay or spirit, ruach. And all of that is connected in, you know, providing energy to us, right? But I never looked into the root word, the parent word of neshama until recently. And when I looked, it blew my mind because. Remember, I said our call is to bear the fruit of the Ruach. In the end of the day, that's how we are going to manifest that we are the children of the Most High. How else will they know that we are, we are of the Father who is love if we are not love? How, how else will the world know that we, um, we are children of the one who makes our joy complete if we don't bear? joy right you know we say exactly. shalom to each other but do we really have shalom you know and that is one of the fruit of the spirit right self-control long suffering it, you go on but if you look at the word neshama the root word of that is nasham so look at the word nasham already you can see again noon or seed eternity right Shem or Shem is name, right? The name of Yahuwah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So do you remember last, last time in our talk, we said, you know, our soul desires the remembrance of his name and to remember him, right? So yes. we remember because we've always had it. it. It was just something that we had forgotten for a moment or we'd forgotten, but the Ruach is there to remind us. But already in the word Nasham, you can see that, you know, we have the seed of the name of our, our Abba that we, are, we have within us to carry, to, to be an ambassador of, right? And look what it means in, he, in the, the definition of that word, to pant of a woman in travail or labor. <laughs> wow. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Already in hidden, you know, in the deepest part of that word nashama, you already can tell that there is a Yahuwah is there's a plan for us to to really bear the fruit of the spirit already from the get go. But it's going to take, you know, it takes energy um, and it takes a lot of pain. It's very painful to be in labor, right? To yeah. bear children. Right? So, you know, now we, we look at and, and we think that, you know, this, Chris, you know, some people believe that, oh, once you become a Christian, everything's going to be all right. But no, like this walk of faith, and I'm not saying we're Christians, but that's sort of what people think. You know, oh, once you convert, once you become born again, you, you know, but but I think more and more people are starting to wake up to the fact that there is this purification process. There's this sanctification process that takes place. Right. And yeah, oh, more so. OK, so so that's one of the things that, that go ahead, sister. 
No, I just, uh, you, what you were saying just made me uh, think of this verse and I just uh, uh, Googled it uh, uh, real quick here. It says, uh, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we mm -hmm. ought, but the spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So the groanings, wow. like the woman of labor you were mentioning, I don't yes. know, it just made me think of this verse because it's just working in us, you know what I mean? I am, um, I, that is a, a perfectly fit word, sister. That is Ruach that put that in your heart to, to, to declare. That is true. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you're right. It fits the description for sure. And you know what else? And this is, I'm going to tie this because I'd mentioned to you offline that the, the father, I believe, has given my daughter uh, 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 an open vision. You know, it's not, you know, it, it's a simple vision, but you'll, you'll see when we break it down how deep it is. And when that came to me a couple of weeks ago, the father also at the same time um, brought my attention to Isaiah 54. Actually, there's a lot of scripture that he brought to my awareness, but we're just going to take it one step at a time, right? But going back to what you're saying, right, that this, this groaneth, and you, you mentioned the word infirmity. You said that, right? Yes. There is a, a provision for us right now. Remember I said, not I said, we know that we, there is a, we are in a war right now. Do you agree? Yes, yes. Oh, absolutely, and, absolutely. You know, actually the war was declared in the garden. Remember with yes. uh, Satan, right? With, with the two seeds right? The seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. So we are at war. And historically, we have seen like literal physical war, like World War I, World War II, and then all the little mini big, big and small wars that, you know, that you can study in history. But you know, right now, it doesn't seem like we're in a war setting, but sister, we are in a war. And Absolutely. it is, we are Absolutely. in a war. And, and that's why, like, um, we're going to talk about, I'm going to highlight a couple of, of, of um, excerpts from the article. Uh, it's called Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Okay, and I, I'm going to show you what I mean, because it really describes today's present time. But at the same time, the Most High has given us a provision. And I'm going to tie it back to the breath that he, that we mentioned in Genesis 2-7, okay? Look at this, Isaiah 54, 1. Sing, O barren, you who have not born. Okay, so remember, our job is to bear the fruit of the Ruach, right? right. But look at the, remember the word sing. We looked at this last time as well in Psalm 95. This word sing, again, overcome. Overcome. <laughs> it is Tell me that one. It is to overcome, to to overcome. So he, like you said, infirmities. You know what? We have been oppressed. You know, we have been taught lies by our forefathers. So we have become a society, a people who are who are you know who think that uh, sicknesses and diseases is part of life. Like we are, you know, we have been put to silence right now. We are on lockdown. So there's a lot of things. And there's a lot of uh, people who are believers, I believe, that are still struggling with bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Do you believe that? Oh, my. I just had a friend over, and he's, um, I don't I forget the kind of religion he's in, but he told me where he works. He says, I can recognize the believer that come to our tourist uh, place because they're all fearful. I was like, what? <laughs> That's not a good what? thing. That's it's how you can phone. tell. <laughs> yeah, he told me that. I hold the phone. You know, the scripture that comes to mind, we have not been given the spirit of fear, but of love. Exactly. Again, yeah. power, power and sound mind. mind. What is that? Sister, that is the fruit of the spirit. That's like two. And at least of the virus, you know? Yeah. Anyways. And, oh, wow. So... But you know, there is this provision to overcome. We are to overcome, O barren, you who have not born. 
Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child. You see that? You who have not, la you're not even laboring. You're not even bear, you're not even travailing to bear the fruit. And it says here, it recognizes the two seed line. For more are the children of the desolate. You see that? Than the children of the married woman, says Yahuwah. Enlarge the place of your tent. Okay, this is what's beautiful here. And let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Don't spare, like do not be stingy. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your nails or your stakes. Um, enlarge the place of your tent. This is something that has come to my awareness. Um, and Yahuwah willing, we're going to break it down. But I want to show you this word tent a little bit, okay? Tent is... It's like your body. Um, your body's in the tent. Yes. I, you got it. I love it. You got it. This is this is a picture of um, of our body exactly, and the corporate uh, representation of this is the tabernacle of Moshe. Oh, yeah. oh, right, the, okay. tab the tabernacle of Moshe is where all of the twelve tribes would gather around it. Right, so that's there. That's where they corporately gather around it. But what's but that interesting? That was a foreshadowing of things to come, I believe. Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, a lot of these things that we're uncovering is a foreshadowing. But like, you yeah, know, so the, right now, as the body of Messiah, would that be like uh, the tent where like the, the body of Messiah is kind of like one, but it's like a tent, you know what I mean? I, I believe that Yahuwah wants to work with us first. So this tent, you're going to notice all throughout the uh, Old Testament, you're going to notice that individual people have tents. Like Abraham had a tent, Sarah had a tent, Jacob had a tent. Um, and going back to Adam, Genesis 2-7, uh, actually not Genesis 2-7, let me go back to here. Here, It says, and Yahuwah planted a, a garden, eastern in garden, eastward in Eden, right? That word garden, okay, is gan, okay? It is an enclosure. It is an enclosure. Oh. Okay, so if you want to look at covering, surround you. So if you go out camping, right, and you want to set up a tent to cover you, right, to surround you because you're outside, you want uh, a put up, to set up a tent that will that will enclose you, so you have some kind of protection from the wind, from the cold, you know. But like, so this is the Garden of Eden is a, the, a tent of Adam, okay, in a sense. But what's mm -hmm. amazing about this is if you look at the word ohel, it's a tent, right? It's a dwelling, a home, a habitation, okay? It's a nomad's tent. So if you've, have you seen a nomad's tent? A nomad's tent is a circular structure, okay? okay. But look at the... Uh, the Hebrew or the root word of ohel, it is a hal, to be clear, to shine. <laughs> so, Yahuwah, we are called to be the light of the world, sister. And, you know, it's talking about enlarge your tent, or in other words, unlearn what's keeping you in the dark so you can increase your awareness, you can cross from darkness into marvelous light. So in yeah. other words, That's like what Abraham did when he yes. became a, like a Hebrew, he, he crossed uh, over, like, crossed over, you know, exactly. You know, so there is a, there's a call for us to increase our ability to be, uh, to shine. You see what I'm saying? To be the light in this dark world. And this is actually letting the Holy Spirit grow in us so that like take control of every part of our being so that we can be a, a better ambassador, a better representation of his his uh light and his absolutely. His and you know what else? Remember we talked about how Adam uh before he put on skin, he was really covered in garments of light. So he was a bright being. 
So there's a call for us to go back. So like when you said we are to go back, we are to cross over, we are to cross from darkness into marvelous light. When we put on our incorruptible flesh, our incorruptible body, we're not going to be made up of the same flesh and blood that we have today. It's going to be what Adam and Eve, the way they were, whatever, you know, however they, um, however their flesh looked like, we know that it's bright. We know that it's light. Okay. But there is this call. Okay. And if you keep on reading here, it's amazing stuff because it says, for you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. And I'm going to skip forward here because you can read this on your own time. But this is what I'm going to, Yahuwah willing, we're going to, um, this has to do with my daughter's vision. This is what, what amazes me. Okay. For this is like the waters of Noah to me. So in a nutshell, what the, the vision that um, my daughter had, that's confirmed by three witnesses by dream of three wow. different people who didn't really um, have any interaction or didn't, we didn't talk about it, we didn't plan it. I didn't even share with my, my girls what I was studying. I was just studying it. Um, and then really what it's about is about the days of Noah. And we live wow. in the days of Noah, right? So oh, yes, we do. it has something to do with this. For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be angry with you nor rebuke you, okay? But this is where I wanted to, that's just a part of it. This is where I wanted to, um, for us to take, because we're going to talk about the breath, the energy, and we are in a silent war, okay? Um, exactly. So there's this silent weapon that's being uh, that's being uh, fired Lethal. at us. Yes. Yes. Lethally being fired at us, and we don't even know it. And that's and this is what we're why we're having this conversation because we're gonna try to bring it uh, before people who have ears to hear and eyes to see. Okay. There is Isaiah 54. We hear this yeah. quoted by a lot of people, right? Go ahead, sister. I was just going to say, because we are not to be ignorant of Satan's device. Yes. It's, it's yes. important to be aware. Exactly. We have to be aware. It, because when we are aware, we do better. Um, we can exactly. see. We see ahead. Exactly. So we can, you know, we can prepare. We can be good. Uh, we can be, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, we'll be good stewards of our resources, but we'll also be diligent, you know? Yeah, and but, we, can, we can pray against the, the spiritual warfare. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So when a lot of, when we're, I hear people say this a lot, but I don't think they really understand what it's saying. So we're going to try to uh, maybe peel off a layer. I'm not saying we've got it all figured out, but Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Okay. So I want to, that, a lot of times we read that and we stop there. But we have to go back a couple of verses prior to understand what's happening. Okay. Let's, let's go back to verse 14. It says, in righteousness, you shall be established. Okay, so in right standing, you shall be established. So what does that mean? If, if you look at the tabernacle of Moshe, right, and that is a place where, you know, only the priest, the high priest can enter specific areas of that, but even the, the Levitical priest, the, the, priestly, um, the priestly line are the ones that are doing the service, right? Um, when you're inside the court, when you're inside the holy place and the holy of holies, that is right standing in Yahuwah. When you are outside that, you are right, you are standing on your own, on your own righteousness, on your own effort. But we are invited to enter, you know, enter the courts of Yahuwah, enter the, the secret place of Yah, right? So in yeah. righteousness, or in other words, in right standing in our Messiah, we will be established. 
And once we are established, look at this, you will be far from oppression. <laughs> and wow. you will not fear. Fear what? From wow. terror, for it will not come near you. We, we have to really take the time to let that simmer. What does that mean? Think about it. You know, like you said, a lot of so-called Christians, or they're called Christians, but why are they fearing? Why are we um, lining up and we can't wait to, to uh, you know, like get our shots or vaccinations? Why are we, wear why are we willingly wearing masks? Why are we willing to yeah, all these I things? Can, I can actually admit that in the beginning, at for the first, I think, weeks, I, I was uh, afraid as well because I didn't know what was going on. But, Dang. you know, I, I did repent for that. But at first it was like I was afraid at first. <laughs> Well, same, you know, sister, the same because this is what, wow, this has been what's written in the in the Bible that there's going to be a, a, a plague that's coming. Could this be it? But, you know, I think that's what differentiates us because we, re, we, we have, a, we're still humans, right? So we react, we react like there, that is the natural inclination of being a human. But the difference is we don't dwell in that. Because we have the ruach yeah, and, in us, gives us discernment, right? Yes, excellent, excellent point. And also, I think what um, how I my eyes were open is because you know the Bible tells us, "Seek and you shall find." So yes. you know, I kept searching out the whole matter, and I and you know it was clear. Then it, the truth came that it's not. It, you know, it's not. It's not at all what people think it is. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, that's a key well, the point. Pushed by the media, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, you said that what kept you from being falling into deception is, or into this fear trap, is your love, your seeking, seeking for truth. And that's exactly yeah. what the word says. You know, if you have a love for truth, you will not be deceived. That is, that yeah. is true and that's the problem is when when the enemy comes look at this verse 15 says that is in, indeed that it says this is truth. what you just so, said yeah look at about, this about having a love for the truth that is yes. very key that it is, is the key to not be so what does that highlight the then sister what high what is highlighted then if the, the enemy, look at this, the, indeed, they shall surely assemble, but not because of me. So this word assemble in Hebrew is not a good word. This is not like assembling together um, like what we are supposed to do. This is to stir up trouble, to quarrel, to mm -hmm. stir up strife, to dread, to well, fear. Well, I get that context, yeah. But right. maybe there are other that says like gather yourself together assemble. oh absolutely i think i've covered in other context but yeah for sure in that context i guess it would be really to uh come against the same well i think the difference too is when they surround us like what's happened recently like with this whole situation um who when when we when people are fearing and they stay fearful that highlights that they were not seeking for truth to begin with they are not yes they don't have a love for truth they're not no because i even try to talk to them and they really don't want to know it they, they just like no they they're driven they're very close like that's what i found out it's like they right. i don't know why but it's kind of like they're close to to doing um you know to researching it i don't i don't i don't know why but that's there's a closure there well, I, I, I think the word says because they don't have a love for truth, you know, yeah. and, and why? It's because they are either distracted, like they're paying attention to the wrong things. They right, have not right. given over completely themselves, surrendered themselves to the most high. There is still an idol in their heart. There is still something there, like a wall that yeah. they don't realizes there and it's keeping them from becoming one with the father or you know like entering into that place where of beauty and that that's the problem sister right 
And it, yeah, and it reminds me of something uh, Brother uh, Brandon much more mentioned the other day in his uh, teaching that uh, he had heard, I think, from the Holy Spirit, say something like that um, because they have kept uh, them far, uh, those that kept uh, the Father far from them, he will keep them far from him in the, the deception. Like, because they didn't grow close to him when they, before that, so now they're kind of like, they don't know the time we're in, you know, they can't see the hour because mm, they're yes. not, you know what I mean? Because if you have, I think that made a lot of sense because I, I was um, really into the word and watching a lot of things that was going on. So I, I think that quickly opened my eyes to what was the truth. But if mm -hmm. you're so far away, it will probably be like uh, more of a, I don't know, maybe just a longer process. But mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that, that, that sounded to be uh, like true. Right. No, it's very true. And, and look at this. Verse 15 says, whoever assembles against you shall fall for your sake. So there's a provision in the word. You, you see, the father is saying to us, who you're, it's inevitable that they're going to assemble around you. They're going to cause you know, dread and fear and strife. They're going to attack you, but they will fall. That's what, this is what the father is saying, right? And because we are established in his righteousness, we shouldn't fear, you know, it will not come near us. And look at this. And this is a beautiful reminder. Yahuwah says, behold, I have created the blacksmith. So the blacksmith is someone who is a, um, the smith, someone who is, let's, let's let, a craftsman, an artif yeah. artificer, or, or to, to me, it sounds like an artificial a craftsman, skillful to destroy. Think about that, right? So Yahweh is saying, I created them. I have created the blacksmith. And look at this sister, who blows the coals in the fire. I want you to pay attention to that word blow. Remember, we've been talking oh, yeah. about right? So this craftsman or this artificial whatever that's planning to destroy, he is harnessing the wind. He is hijacking the wind and redirecting the blowing of it. So to make the fire, the coals of the fire light up, okay? Um, and what does he use that for? Verse 16 says he, he brings forth an instrument for his work. You see that? Now, <laughs> if you look at electrification, electricity, the energy war, what do you think they're doing? They're taking fake electricity. They're taking energy, energy weapons, and they're using yeah. that to form instrument so that they can implement what they want to do but this is amazing and look at what yahoo he's not done i have created the spoiler to destroy look look at what yahoo is saying listen they may be harnessing the power of the wind right to make it work for them for example uh the cell towers the satellite um, you know, the 5G, 6G, whatever, the, all of that is being sourced. Uh, they're creating electricity. They're harnessing the power um, from the air to bring it, bring it to implementation, what they want to do. But Yahuwah says, I created the spoiler to destroy. So Yahuwah also has something that he has created that will destroy what they created. You see, and I think just to do a little bit of a step forward, I believe this is the sun. Yahuwah is going to use the sun against them, the the S U N. Okay, and so okay, yeah, I was wondering <laughs> S U N, the sun, and um, look at this: no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That's what he's saying. Listen, he's saying no weapon. Okay, so what? Now we have to put that into something that we can uh, understand in today's day, okay? 
So what weapon? So now we're going to bring up this article called uh, The Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. And I think we've determined that um, that we are in a wep we are in a war, like we've talked about, right? And so this article starts off, and I'm just going to highlight a few things, okay? Um, energy is recognized as the key to all activity on Earth, right? Makes sense, and we'll see if we can delve into that a little bit more. Natural science is the study of the sources and control of natural energy. Social science theoretically expressed as economics. Blah, blah, blah. But so energy is key, in other words, okay? Um, uh, maybe I'll read this. Uh, okay, maybe I'll read this. In 1954, this was the issue of primary concern, okay? What is it? Um, that knowledge, basically, if you read the beginning, okay, let's just read, all science is merely a means to an end. The means is knowledge. The end is control. Beyond this remains only one issue. Who will be the beneficiary? So in 1954, this was the issue of primary concern. Although the so-called moral issues were raised in view of the law of natural selection, it was agreed that a nation or world of people who will not use their intelligence are no better than animals who do not have intelligence. Such people are beasts of burden and stakes on the table by choice and consent. Consequently, in the interest of future world order, peace, and tranquility, it was decided to privately wage a quiet war against the American public with an ultimate objective of permanently shifting the natural and social energy or wealth of the undisciplined and irresponsible many into the hands of the self-disciplined, responsible, and worthy few. In order to implement this objective, it was necessary to create, secure, and apply new weapons, which, as it turned out, were a class of weapons so subtle and sophisticated in their principle of operation and public appearance as to earn for themselves the name silent weapons. You know, we were just talking about earlier how we, um, people who are not seeking truth, they're not looking for truth, they don't have a love for truth, what ends up happening is they become undisciplined and irresponsible. So in other words, they get taken advantage of because they're not looking, they're not searching. So they become less, they're, they're not, in, they're not uh, um, exercising the intelligence that the creator gave them, gave us, right? So look at this part here. Um, so... In conclusion, the objective of economic research as conducted by the magnates of capital, so when it comes to banking, goods and services, right? In order to achieve a totally predictable economy, the low class elements of society must be brought under total control. You see that? What does that look like? It must be housebroken, trained, assigned a yoke and long-term social duties from a very early age before they have an opportunity to question the propriety of the matter. In order to achieve such conformity, the lower class family unit must be disintegrated by a process of increasing preoccupation of the parents and the establishment of government operated daycare centers for the occupation, uh, wow, I can't even pronounce that, occupationally orphaned children. And so in other words, they need to take control and the control must start in breaking down the house and the control needs to start. The education of that has to start at an early age. OK, look at the description of the silent weapon. Everything that is expected from an ordinary weapon is expected from a silent weapon by its creators, but only in its own manner of functioning. Look at this. It shoots situations instead of bullets, <laughs> right? So you, you, right now, it doesn't look like we're in a war, but we are. But instead of bullets, we're seeing situations. Exactly. Right? Exactly right. Propelled by data processing instead of chemical reaction or explosion. Data processing. Think about that, sister. Oh, we have to track whoever, you know, how many people is sick, how many people are, you know, like tracking we're tracking everything 
originating from bits of data instead of grains of gunpowder from this a computer. Can you see this? Um, hold on this a second. Data processing. I, I, I think this process data, right? This, wow. Uh, what, what is that? Can you see the is writing? That, um, I cannot, but let me. I just, I just want to mention it on the because oh, of censorship. Very good. I love it. Yeah, I can see it. I can. See. So that's that's I right. I don't know, but I think mean, the, the data processing. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. No, yeah, that is subliminal messaging through that. That's what I yeah. heard in research I was doing and other things like really like yeah. other horrible things. But the, the, this, the description here, and you can read this, all this on your own because I'm sharing it on the screen. One thing that I want to point out is look at this. It makes an unmistakable noise, causes unmistakable physical and mental damage, and unmistakably interferes with the daily social life unmistakable to a trained observer, one who knows what to look for, the public cannot comprehend this weapon and therefore exactly. cannot believe. Look at this, because they cannot That's see. That's why they're always talking about the silent enemy. Yeah, yeah. Yes, the right. enemy. So because you cannot see it, you cannot comprehend it, you cannot believe that they are being attacked by a subdued and subdued by a weapon. And the public might instinctively and it's also feel this weapon. This weapon is is the danger that because they're, they're those that are not aware. If they become sick with this uh, this thing in chemtrails, you know the mixture of the two combined, and mm -hmm. they, they well, um, all of a sudden they need to go take that that v venom V, you know, because oh, now yeah. they're if they believe there's really something going on and that they. I think that that's the the warfare that that's going on. It's like yeah. a, a bio weapon created to take the mark of the bees. You know what I mean? I it, do, I do. And you know, the weaponry that they chose is in fact invisible. Why exactly, is everything is invisible. The perfect um, enemy, the perfect yeah. enemy for them to yeah, like uh, create the order. The new order out of that chaos that they exactly. orchestrated. The yes. The Hegelian dialect, like a exactly. problem, reaction, solution. So and, the people will go begging for their solution, you know? That's right. And, you know, we can even go a little deeper or going go even before the invisible enemy, which we know today as with the situation that's happening, right? But right. we really, it boils down to energy. Do you notice it? Yeah. And yeah. we're going to talk about this because all the diseases, all the sicknesses that we're seeing. Well, the, the, demons, the demons are spiritual. The demons are, oh, yeah. are they're invisible, you know? So, yeah. yeah. So, it is. So, energy the, is invisible, if you think about it. You can't really, just like we talked earlier, yeah. the wind. You can't really see the yes. wind, but you can feel its effect, right? So, so look, I, I want to write, like, one last thing I want to say is, look at this. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong instinctively but that is because of the technical nature of the silent weapon they cannot express their feeling in a rational way or handle the problem with intelligence therefore they do not know how to that cry so for help <laughs> that is so true they don't know how to cry for help and do not know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it so this is go this goes now back to what you said. Therefore, the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. Look at that. it attacks the vitality, options, mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking the sources of natural and social energy and their physical, mental, emotional strengths and weaknesses. I mean, yes. that's just a few that's right. words. Just a few words. Do you see everything that you said earlier is what the article is talking about? Okay. So we have to understand that we are in a war. So I, I bring up that article because I think we need 
and by the way, that article, it's called, again, it's called um, uh, the silent, uh, it's called the silent weapons for quiet wars. And this was something that was stumbled upon um, by someone and they discovered it. And in this 45 page uh, paper, um, you're gonna see that they do have an agenda. And the agenda is something that is already implemented and at play today, okay? And all I'm saying is we are in a war. It's just not, it's not, it doesn't look like the typical war. You know what I'm saying? It's not the, the that's typical war that we all play them to. It's way worse in a way because it, it's so deceptive. So, mm -hmm. so deceptive. And also what I was going to say is that this in the, the chemtrails, what it does is that it, it will be different, the symptoms from person to person, because we all have different weaknesses. So right. that will also confuse people because they're going to say, like, this is, you know, that's why they're, they're blaming it all on that and craziness. You know what I it's mean? It's very deceptive. You know what else? I want to, um, I believe in subliminal messages, okay? And we got to pick this up, okay? Um, I'm going to show you one thing. There's a, a recent movie that came out, okay? And we're not going to talk about the details or anything like that of the movie, but I just want to show you the the way they advertise, the way they promote the movie, okay? So remember, I'm going to show you this, okay? So this is out recently, this movie. I, you, I don't know if you know, but it's Wonder Woman 19. I didn't know, but that looks really, uh, just seeing it looks super okay. symbolic. Fallen angel. So, exactly. You can see already, right? Now look yeah. at look at the double like, like double. Okay, go ahead. What world war or something? No, I don't know. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay. So this the, the this um, imagery will pop up even if you watch the trailer in YouTube, right? But you're gonna see WW eighty four. Now I, I I first thing I thought right is is world war but 84 is interesting now you have to calculate it a little bit or decode it so there's this idea of reducing numbers okay so if you add 8 plus 4 right it's 12 mm -hmm. right now if you add 1 plus 2 it's 3 so now i want you to look at what that looks like now once you decode world it war three? yes we are in a war we are in a war, but it's invisible. It's quiet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think that's why uh, Saya said that the, the, the last days would be the most deceptive time. That's Absolutely. why the silent warfare, warfare were being waged because that's, that's how you can deceive people. It's like, it's so silent. Absolutely. And, and they again, don't know who the right. And again, we're here to remind everyone that Yahuwah has a plan and I want to bring yeah. up Daniel 12 okay Daniel 12 because I this is a prophecy uh, I love the the book of Daniel. yes there you go so even here you can see the time of the end and so we're not gonna uncover the Daniel 12 because there's a lot of Daniel 12 study out there but I want to highlight something here okay um, if they are harnessing the power of the air which is energy, right? And they're trying to implement and use that to power up their implementation to attack us. Look at what Yahuwah has planned for us, okay? Daniel 12, 7 says, and I, I heard a man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time times and a half you know that you've heard that right and a lot of people say that that's the tribulation period right but in this time times and a half and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people all these things shall be finished so what i get there sister florence is Yahuwah has a plan. His plan will be accomplished to scatter the power that he put in his set-apart people. You see that? There is, in other words, we are going 
to get empowered in these last days, in these days that we are in, in this last hour that we are in. And that okay, so how the last and, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Well, well, who's scattering there? Is that the enemy? Well, he, he, this is uh, the question here is da so Daniel looked and behold, there stood other two. So there's like these two men clothed in linen and they're standing on waters. OK. And the question is, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? So, yeah, you're right. You know, the there is a showdown that's going to happen and the anti Christ is going to show their wonders. But how long will it be to well, the end? Of the that he will overcome the same. But that that doesn't mean that we're to fear. Like even even if we're, we're to to die for our Messiah, I mean, um, it's it's it has to. We have to see it in a way that it's not like it's an honor. It's not. You know what I mean? Oh, so it's, absolutely. It's, it's how we it's how, it's how we we see it. You know. Because we're going to go through, through some hardship for sure, for sure, you know. You know, if we were to die, and we and I believe some of us are called for that. Um, if we are to die following after the testimony of our Messiah, right? That is a powerful testimony. That is a scattering of the power of the testimony that we were able to live. We were able to show right so even in dying there is the ability to for the word to get out for the word to scatter you know that that is what i see the power of the set apart people whether we are called to die or you know survive a little bit and you know be caught up in the air whatever right in in our testimony there's going to be power that's going to be manifested on the entire in the entire earth is what I see, right? And that power, really sister, that. Yeah. is in the breath. That's my point, is in the breath of our Mashiach. And so this is what I mean when I say no weapon formed against you shall prosper because we've been given the power of the breath of the Almighty, right? This well, is what- Well, sister, when she had the, sorry, but I just, ahead, it just related to what you were saying. Please. Well, I'm not yes. gonna say the whole dream, but part of her dream that was a really prophetic dream but she she said when the enemy was coming after her to attack her she yes. uh kept on saying cover me your holy spirit holy spirit cover me so like you said the power is in the holy spirit the breath the breath of the holy spirit is that what you're saying yes yes so yes yeah. the power is harnessed in the blowing of the breath of the almighty okay and I, I like how you bring that up because I think you're talking about your friend had a dream or who had a dream? Was it June? No, that's, that's my little sister. My little sister. She had a really prophetic dream of, of the end, the coming into Messiah. Really? And just, I'm just, I already have a video on it, but I have French and English of her dream. But it just like the part where the, the Antichrist and the whole uh, host of demons are coming after her to yes. like punch her. And as soon as she stopped uh, praying, she told me that the that she could feel the the, the punches hot, hitting her body harder. So she right. kept on praying, "Cover me in your Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, cover me." That was wow. that was her. I love that. You know that is indeed prophetic. The covering, the covering. Think of a covering as an atonement. Covering, and yes. if you look at atonement. Mm -hmm. At one meant, right? We are meant to be one in his By the blood of Messiah. Exactly. Because we believe on him. Yeah, that's a very good, important point you're, you're, you're pointing out there. Yes. So your sister, I think her dream is definitely prophetic. And I think this opens up Joel 2. Because in these last days, we the the young, uh, was it the, the sons and daughters are going to be given visions right yeah you know yes. old men are going to be given dreams we are, and and we are going to try to talk about that because i want to take what your sister's dream is and i want to show you what my daughter's dreams have been and the vision 
that my daughter had as well a couple weeks ago. But do you see, I have to explain this because you see the reason why I, I, I received the revelation that there is something prophetic about the vision is because I've had this background of understanding. See, if I didn't have this background, I wouldn't, my, my daughter would have shared that to me and I'd be like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so this is why I'm taking the time, right? I'm taking the time for us to understand. So what, in other words, I'm trying to share where my thought process have been, the trail of my thoughts. Right. So right. that you can understand when I share the dream to you or the vision to you, because then it'll make sense, okay? So yeah. remember, we've been talking about um, the power that animates us, that makes us living beings, is that in the beginning, Yahuwah blew, blew the breath of life into our nostrils. And I showed you in Isaiah 54 that the enemy is doing the same thing. <laughs> the enemy is blowing coals of fire, making it into his instrumentation for his work. But Yahuwah says, uh-uh. No weapons formed against you will prosper. So what is this weapon? We talked earlier about this energy that the, the, the elites have discovered that will play a key role in total domination. And I showed you a little bit of what their plan looks like. And, and literally, they are extracting uh, electricity to power up their weapons, their silent weapons, but do you know at the same time, they're also stealing our energies. They are taking our mental, physical, um, emotional energies and they're making it, uh, they're, they're depleting it. Okay. So yeah, how, exactly. do, how, okay. Do you, how do you harness energy from the wind, from the blowing? Because remember, the breath is the air, right? So I use this illustration of a wind turbine. How do you access? electricity or harness electricity from the wind so it's very simple wind you've seen wind turbines right you've seen them all over yeah. right farmlands and stuff and we don't think much of it but i don't know i think you and i understand that that's actually not good these wind turbines are causing cancer have you come across that study yes i have i have yeah because in simple terms they emit very low uh, ultra uh, sound frequencies that you cannot hear below 40 hertz. And anything below 40 hertz, it it it, uh, it activates fear. It, it does yeah, well, imbalance. Yeah, you know, I brought it back to my memory because I had researched a while back on that, but I, mm -hmm. I kind of like had sort of forgotten, but you brought that back as like, yeah, that's true, that's right. <laughs> it's not good yeah. for you. It's not, that's why birds are, are you know, are falling, are, are their, their, their navigation, right. their natural right. GPS is getting interrupted by these wind turbines. So, but, but the wind turbine though, it, it gives a good example on how energy can be harnessed from the wind, okay? So it works on a simple principle, as you can see, this is how it looks like. So instead of using electricity to, to make the wind like a fan, the wind turbine uses the wind to make the electricity. So wind turns the propeller-like blades of a turbine around a rotor. So that mechanical movement, that rotation, that spin, that spin uh, is a generator. That generates and creates electricity, okay? So the science is there. It's very true, you know, because if you look at, um, if you look at, uh, I, I have a picture here of how the world that we live in, the earth is powered up by the sun, okay? So it's the same idea. The sun emits these charged particles. They're called solar wind, okay? I want you to pick up that solar wind. And the earth, that sort of spins around, you know, it, it goes around and it, it kind of creates this electromagnetic um, uh, form around the Earth. Do you see that? This is a picture, I mean, I, I don't really believe, and I don't know what your position on this one, sister, is, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> we are in one with, in Mashiach, but about the flat Earth and the globe. The, 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 oh, the well, I have a testimony. 
of his sister and Messiah. So I'll wait, but I can't share it right now. But I that no, I've never been interested in, in going to that direction. But what she said, it really makes me think it's globe. And when she <laughs> when she's gonna share that with you, let me know what yeah. you think. Yeah, it's, you know, wow. it's one of those things that uh, we don't, uh, you know, it's one of those things that we will know one day, right? <laughs> I, I just couldn't care less before, like, I, I, and even now, it's not something that I have an interest in, in into because right. I'm like, is that a yes. salvational issue? No, it's not. No, exactly. So. Exactly. Same here. I, I and I, you know, same here. And that's why that I, I just put that up because I have studied a little bit of that, not too too in depth, but I have my position on that. But this is the best picture that I could find because um, I want to read from the book, uh, The Invisible Rainbow. But point being is the energy, the electricity is produced in the, the movement, in that rotational spin, okay? So if you look at our DNA, okay, our DNA is the same thing in a sense. Um, when you look at a DNA, usually we see it from the side, but this picture shows us what it looks like on the end of it. So when you see a DNA from the end, you're going to see that it is also shaped in a circular, that rotation, right. right? And that rotation, in through that, what implodes into the center of that is scalar energy. And this is the very source of life. This is why we are alive, because we've got these scalar energy going through in the center of our DNA. So it's the same idea and it's the same thing with the earth, okay? Um, this, I'm gonna read, it's pretty important here, okay? So um, almost all of the matter, this is page 94 or 114 in the book Invisible Rainbow, uh, almost all of the matter in the universe is electrically charged, an endless sea of ionized particles called plasma. So I wanna, I want you to pay attention to the word endless sea, okay? It's like it's being used, the wording used here is, is making it similar to ocean, to the sea, right? This plasma. Now, our sun uh, is made of plasma, right? And it sends out an ocean of electrons, protons, and helium ions, and in a steady current called the solar wind. Okay, so the solar wind blows at a at 300 miles per second. Again, you see that word blowing, sister, blow? It bathes the earth and all of the planets before diffusing it out into the plasma between the stars. Okay, so so in other words, um, this the the sun is emitting the solar wind and it really creates an electromagnetic environment around the earth. Okay. So and, and that is what powers up our Earth. So you know how um, you know that when you come home, that electricity is on when you see the neighbors or your house porch, the light is on, right? That's how you know that electricity is working. When, when it comes to the Earth, you see these northern lights here? You see that northern light? That northern light is produced by the solar wind because the solar wind interacts with the gases that is in the in the atmosphere of the Earth. So when it inter, in, in, when it interacts with with nitrogen, oxygen, uh, when hydrogen interacts with that, it creates these beautiful uh, lights called northern lights. So that's how you know the Earth is powered up. So my point is, um, this is evidence that of electricity electricity that is covering or that is allowing for life to exist on earth is my point right so just like how the wind is being used by catching the wind and through the rotation of that you can create electricity it's the same thing in our bodies and the same thing with the earth right makes sense right um yes and <laughs> oh and we and the scripture says sister that we have this earth there's this treasure in earthen vessels so we have this treasure in our earthen vessels that the, that the excellency of the power 
of Yahuwah may be of him, not of, of us, right? That's what 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says. And I want you to see that it is actually very much the same when it comes to our bodies and who we are, the way the creator made us. And um, have you come across Ecclesiastes 12? Have you had a chance to read that chapter? It's, it's such a beautiful chapter, sister. Remember your creator, your creator before the silver cord is oh, loose. Sorry, no, actually, I let me the, read that in a while. I don't. Uh, I read the whole Bible before for well, sure, but I mean that. Is, I, didn't, I didn't have that one in mind. And do you know why I love this scripture? Because it talks about our makeup. Okay, it talks about our makeup. Um, the DNA. Sounds the, like the, the DNA. Way, you know how we are made up of three parts, our spirit, soul, and body, right? And yeah. we looked at um, in Genesis 2-7 where the Yahuwah himself is the source of our energy, right? The source of our breath. Um, Ecclesiastes 12 talks about what happens to us when we, um, this talks about when we age, what happens to us when uh, we grow old and how our bodies, you know, sort of degrade. And, and I like how it starts because it says, remember now, remember now, remember, we, we talked about how we have a desire in our souls to remember his name and remember Yahuwah. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. And that, that's a nice, now that we are young, we have this, um, we have this energy, we have this mental energy, and we have this, you know, we're young to be able to yeah. really go back and have that mental disposition and remember, you know, we can study, yeah. we love this, yeah. right? And it says, before the difficult days come is the point. So there will be difficult wow. days. And the days is when people get older, right? And you can read this on your own, sister, but I want to highlight what happens towards the end because here it talks about, it, it gives us an idea of what happens when a person dies basically, okay? So remember your creator and this is where it becomes the, the triune being and the source of our breath is, um, is seen in this passage of scripture, okay? Remember your creator before the silver cord is loosed or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at the well okay that sounds like a picture that the that solomon is trying to paint right it's like a picture and it kind of looks like a fountain doesn't it we'll go over that in in a second okay but so Interesting. Yeah, and then I know that this has to do with mankind when mankind dies because verse 7 says, then the dust will return to the earth as it was. You see that? Yeah, and the yeah. the spirit will return to Elohim who gave oh, yes, it. Oh, yes, it definitely does. Yeah. Definitely. So it's no doubt that, and again, I'm re the reason I'm bringing this up because it's going to help us understand the vision, okay? But before the silver cord is loose, okay, so let's let's break it down, okay? Um, if you look at a silver cord, okay, um, if you look at a cord, an electricity cord, that is the means of how electricity is transported oh, wow. from the force, going. right, into the equipment or into that uh, the 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 thing that's being powered up. So if you look at it from that perspective, you know, if, before electricity came about and people were using lamps, um, then it's like the oil, okay, <laughs> the oil. Or if you, we've, we've been talking about the neshama, what animates us, what makes us living is the neshama of Yah. So the silver cord is like this cord that is attaching the, our vessels, this earthen vessel that we have, to the source of life, right? Which is the neshama. And 
What's interesting is silver is the best conductor of electricity because it contains a higher number of movable atoms. So I, I just thought that, you know what, the, the cord has a limit, just point that out. So the, the Ecclesiastes 12 talks about a silver cord. And um, the second thing it talks about is this golden bowl. What is this golden bowl? Um, if you look at the Hebrew word of bowl, it is gula, okay? And it is a bowl of a lamp. So think of golden lampstand. Think of... Wow. Right? Oh, the, wow. It's Revelation. Right. It reminds me of the, the verse in Revelation, the golden right. lampstand. You got it. Exactly. It, and also something else, but I don't know. I just, this verse came to me when you were reading that. Um, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. I love that. I love that. That's Luke, right? Luke. Uh, yeah. Uh, how was it? That you? I think I just read. Wait. I, that that's was awesome. Mad. I love both of those scriptures. Six point two. Absolutely. So, so the, it's I, the lamp. I think it's in reference to the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. You know? oh, yeah. Well, he, here's the thing. It's a it's a golden bowl, right? So it's a lampstand. Wow. So it's a if you think about a lampstand, it it carries the light. It is a carrier of the oil right. or the right. right? Yeah. So if you look at kind of like right? a tent earlier, where a tent right. is like carry the the, so the light. If you look at yeah, if, if you look at Adam, okay, he was bright natured at one point. Adam was supposed to be the light of the world. Like we are, that's our call. But when uh, when the disobedience happened through Eve and he joined Eve, right, in that disobedience or in dying for Eve, um, what happened was his bright nature uh, basically dimmed to, to like the bright nature dimmed down. OK, so what I'm saying is this to me represents the soul because lamp, a lamp stand will be rendered. It's like useless without the light, if you think about it. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So it's only like a vessel, a vessel. Exactly. It's a carrier of the light. Yeah. So the soul right. can be darkened. It can also be lightened. And, you know, through through purification, through restoration through our Mashiach, right? And and I bring that up. So there's the mention of golden bowl. There's also a mention of pitcher, okay? Look at this. When the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher is shattered at the fountain. So if you look at the mm. pitcher, this mm. is a jar, sister, a jar that's made of made up of of, uh, of soil, right? Of, of um, right. Or mud, right, right? So it's like the wow. flesh, right? right? So, you know, if you look at um, a fountain, um, for you to carry the living water that this fountain gives, you need to, well, first, you need to pick it up through the soul, right? That's the golden bowl is like that soul. Soul is the one that is that has the access to the spirit, right? Which is the living water of, yeah, right? If you think about it. and for the uh, living water to be trans to manifest in the physical world, we need to have flesh. We need to have this body, right? So right. really, this flesh is a means to carry the living water from the fountain to right. the thirsty, right? right? Yeah. It's an earthen vessel yeah. made from mud. So it's flesh. Plus, it's an it's, instrument. It's, it's an instrument, exactly. And and it, you know, I, I see this picture. It's a jar. It's made of flesh. It's made of uh, it's made of uh, mud. So when when we die, it goes back to dust. But the golden bowl is interesting, right? Because so it's a picture of our flesh. Yeah, like this it's picture a, it's is a picture a, of our flesh, right? Solid. So now right. check this out. And then it doesn't stop. It says, "Or the wheel broken at the well." Okay, the wheel. In Hebrew, it's galgal, okay? Galgal, in one of its definitions, means the whirlwind, <laughs> whirling. So the wheel is the spirit of man, okay? If you, or the, it is the connection to the spirit of Yah. So if you look at Ezekiel 1, 
you know, if you look at that, the, the there is the idea of the four living creatures. And the picture that is being presented is that this wheel, right? The terms. So what's interesting The wheel is, within a wheel, I think? Yeah, exactly. This, was it in Ezekiel 1, right? Let me, let me see. It is. I think that's the one, right? The wheel within the wheel? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's the one. That Let me, here we go. Yeah. See, now as I looked at the living creatures, behold, a wheel was on the earth beside each living creature with its four faces. Uh, yeah, exactly. The appearance of their workings was, as it were, a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Oh, you know, that reminds me, I had a dream about this. But anyway, <laughs> that's oh. not, we're not going to get going into that today. But so the wheel, and I'll, I'll explain why this is, to me, I see that as a, 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 sp a picture of the spirit because the wheel is, um, if you look at the well or this fountain, it is that circular component, right? This, this circular component or mechanism that basically simplifies the movement of the silver cord or that cord that attaches the golden bowl right so that it can access the water from the fountain from the living from the well right so it is the means um, that uh, allows the soul to access the living water so that is how the soul accesses the the life in other words yahuwah's wow. life so without the wheel without the spirit we we wouldn't be able to uh, draw from the living fountain from the water because right. you're, how are we going to attach where are we going to attach to it's right? like our connection to our heavenly right. father exactly it is and and look at what the wheel means in hebrew whirlwind if you look at a whirlwind that is a that is a movement of air right in circular in a circular manner right and and it, what's interesting is the wheel and the bowl both of them share the same root word, which means to roll together. So they are designed to work together, the wheel and the bowl, the golden bowl, right? And right. gold simply means purified. Remember we said, we shall come forth as gold. So there's a call for our souls to be purified, right? So we can come forth as gold, okay? So right. to, isn't that a beautiful picture of, of, of what we are made of? Of, right it's a beautiful picture very beautiful and I, I'll, I'll, and I'll tell you something <laughs> go ahead sister um, I'm just I don't know the verse exactly but this like the the Holy Spirit I think is a reference somewhere as as wind is it yes I'm trying to search absolutely. To search um, everywhere okay I'm trying to think uh, the Holy Spirit definitely is a anytime Yahuwah uh, comes into the scene you're gonna see there's a whirlwind you know there's thunders there's lightning you definitely um i think you're talking about here here's another thing uh i think you're talking about john john Smith. oh it was pentecost i think suddenly a sound like a like yes. blowing wind a violent wind came from heaven exactly. yes acts definitely acts as well and you know what else? John 3. A violent wind from heaven. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a powerful wind. Um, look at yeah. John 3. Yeah, that's right. John 3, 8. It says, the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So everyone who is born of the spirit of the Ruach. So wow. definitely. <laughs> The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you.